Uh, hi everyone, welcome to uh, welcome back to the CentOS Summer Dojo, the second session of the day. Um, and right now we've got Jim Baer who's going to talk to us about running RPM Inspect at scale on CentOS. Jim, thanks for joining us. Cool. Thanks, Sean. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, hi everyone. Thanks for joining and taking the time to hear about this. Uh, so, again, my name is Jim Baer. I am a software engineer at Red Hat on the Operating System Continuous Integration Team, or OSCI for short. Um, <clears throat> we primarily work with RHEL, but uh, that ties in deeply with things like Fedora and CentOS, so we kind of work on all of them. <laughs> I've been on the team for three years today, in fact, and the, this is um, another reminder that there are a lot of things moving, a lot of parts, and uh, I just try my best to keep up with it and, and help discover what's going on if people have questions. Uh, there's a lot of smarter people on this talk about uh, the CI than me, but <laughs> um, you can see uh, I'm Jay Bear on IRC or Jim Bear in a lot of places, GitHub and so on. Um, but yeah, well, let's go ahead and hop into it. So RPM inspect tag runner, uh, it's three words. What's RPM inspect, what's a tag and, and what's the runner? So we'll dive into RPM inspect itself. So you can see in the top RPM inspect is a open source project that's on GitHub. You can follow the link there to get to it and to steal the definition directly from the project is that it's a build deviation analysis tool. So as the name would imply, it inspects the RPMs. So you take the output of a build and you examine it for things such as policy compliance or changes between builds or uh, it, what the business considers to be best practices, right? So we have profiles for Fedora, CentOS, uh, Red Hat, Enterprise Linux, and each one of those might deviate with what they think is okay for a build. Um, so <clears throat> today we already have RPM Inspect running an, against a, a pull request or merge requests in GitLab. If you follow the link here, you'll see an example of Zool running RPM Inspect. If you follow the little links, you'll see some artifacts that are log files and shows it again, checking to see if the change is okay in the eyes of RPM Inspect. So uh, RPM Inspect is responsible for running 189 tests across 44 inspections. So what does that mean, right? We're using the words tests and inspections. And so if we go over, here are three examples. If you ask RPM Inspect, it will tell you all of them. If you look at the very bottom of the slide, you'll see there's RPM Inspect dash LV. And, but here's three. So uh, licenses, right? So we verify that a specified license in the metadata uh, describes a permissible software license. So open source software has a lot of licenses and we wanna make sure that whatever software we're shipping is in compliance with either what the business wants or even what the software allows. So we have licensing checks. Um, another one that's a bit more technical is run path. I just chose this one because it had a very short definition, <laughs> but it checks to make sure that the elf shared objects are not using forbidden paths as noted there. And then sim links, which I think are Pretty, uh, pretty easy to follow along with as well. So symbolic links must be resolvable on the installed system. And so these are just a couple of the um, inspections. And again, there's a whole list of them. If you wanna find out more about RPM Inspect itself uh, and what it's looking at when you give it a build, run R like install it on your system, run RPM Inspect-LV, and it'll show you a whole bunch of tests. <laughs> so, we have RPM inspect. So we run it against a tag. So what is a tag? So in CentOS, we use Koji uh, for building uh, packages. And uh, you can see, again, there's another link to some documentation about it. I think of the tags as sort of labels. So when you have a new build, it goes through a series of processes. So in CentOS Stream, you'll have what's called, so the prefix is C9S, even though it's CentOS Stream 9. C9S-gate is sort of the very first landing spot for a new build. Um, and then once that build goes through the gating process, which is a thing that my team works on and the general safety of the package looks good, then it's available to, uh, to be shipped to customers. Again, as long as a developer still wants to, things haven't changed, maybe there's another update that has to come through, you know, the, you can have multiple of these. But as it goes through those steps, it can go from a gate tag to what's called a candidate tag, which means it's a candidate to use. You can go to the a pending tag, so it's, it's ready to go. And there's there's several, and again, this, this depends on each distribution. Um, and you can list all the tags using the Koji command. So if you install both Koji and sent package, you can run Koji-p stream. That just means use the stream profile and then list tags. And that'll give you a 
big old list of all the tags that are available. There's a whole bunch of them. Sometimes there's specialty tags for special builds. Uh, those are traditionally called side tags. So think about you know a very large build that wants maybe 10 updates to ship all at the same time and you want to test together. That's what a side tag does. So in, the, in our example though, we just want to test RPM inspect against everything that we think we will be shipping to a customer. So in that instance, you can see that this is the command that we run, which is koji p stream list tag, give it the latest flag as well, and then c9s pending. And the latest avoids getting duplicate packages whenever you're running it. So you can have many builds in a tag, but the latest does help to make, you know, this is the newest thing that uh, we're trying to ship out today. And you can see that here. So if you're looking for fancy graphs or, <laughs> interesting charts, this is about as exciting as it's going to get. Um, so in this case, <clears throat> that previous command that I showed you, I ran it and the Koji command will then provide you the packages on the left, the NVRs on the left, the tags in the middle, and then who did the building on the right. And <clears throat> I just looked over and saw one of my teammates uh, making a comment about the weather. That's funny. Um, but the, the part we want from, uh, from this screenshot is on the left. So we're mostly trying to pull off that first argument when we're running the tag. And those are all the builds that we're going to run against. So we know about RPM inspect. Um, it is in fact a, uh, inspection tool, but it's a test really. And then the tags that we're running against. So what is the tag runner? So the intent for this project was a lot of testing, uh, primarily with RPM inspect itself, but also across <clears throat> uh, CentOS 9 and as a result, RHEL 9, as we were getting ready to go GA with it. We wanted to run uh, inspections across everything as we were making new releases of RPM inspect. Um, so in, in this case, so what it does is just, it generates that list that I showed you. Um, it then runs against those builds in a threaded manner. So RPM inspect is not terribly slow, um, not compared to its uh, predecessor, which we'll get into in the next slide. Um, but if everything works as, as intended, it takes about three and a half hours for us to run the entirety of CentOS against RPM inspect. And that's with a 20 thread system uh, running Fedora. It is, it, it uses a little bit of everything. There's no one bottleneck when running a bunch of builds. Uh, there is storage concerns. You do have to make sure you can effectively download the RPM and then unpack the RPM. And then if you're doing a comparison, you do two unpacks. So you have to make sure you have enough space for all of that. RPM inspect does some math so you don't, <laughs> you don't break your file system, but it, it, we do want to make sure it's there. But it uses a uh, network to fetch the build, it then has to use IO to unpack the builds, and then you use a lot of processing power to walk through those files and inspect it. So there's no one thing, but having uh, one test per thread available is, is what I've found to be the fastest way to chew through a whole bunch. Um, some other things it does is it standardizes the commands that we're running. So uh, one of the primary examples is we don't care as much about info information. So it's helpful for individual builds for developers, but if we're just trying to see the general stability between RPM inspect and CentOS stream itself, we just want to know what's what RPM inspect is seeing that's broken or not really broken. I guess it's just more that it's reporting as a failure. We want to know if, if that's a failure of the code or if that's a failure of the build. And so we're trying to, to minimize the, the or trying to maximize, I guess, the signal to noise ratio. And then <clears throat> we also are trying to capture as much data as possible. So we're not just trying to run it and catch the exit code. So traditionally with RPM inspect, the exit code is either zero or one. Zero means passed and one means failed. Um, but we also are capturing standard output of RPM inspect itself, as well as standard error in case something were to break, uh, the runtime it takes, the exact command that we ran, and of course, obviously the test results. So, <clears throat> and then once we have, so say we do 2,500 builds and you know, 86% of them pass, those 86%, we then generate a list where we pull the previous build. So if you have uh, Z shell 1.0-2, we want Z shell 1.0-1. And then we're gonna pull both of those down and, and compare the two of them. So <clears throat> this is actually running our, uh, Tag Runner itself. So you can just clone Tag Runner directly from uh, RPM Inspect's repository. And then you just uh, generate the list, which you can see here. This is just a shell script. We also have a Python version that a teammate created. 
and it generates list.txt. It's just that, that list of NVRs that uh, we showed earlier. And then when you tell Tag Runner to run, it does this. <laughs> and you can see that it starts pulling down each NVR directly and starts running it. And then once it hits the number of threads, which uh, the Tag Runner finds dynamically, it looks at your system. And then uh, uh, if you have 20 threads, it runs 20 inspections. If you have uh, eight, like my laptop does, it'll only run eight. Um, and you can define it. You can do less if you want. But if you don't tell it, it just tries to use as much as it can. And then it just runs these. And then as each in inspection finishes, it pulls another one from the list and starts running through it. <clears throat> so this gets into sort of the why Tag Runner exists. So uh, previous to RPM Inspect, Red Hat originally had a tool called RPM Diff. Um, this was built uh, many years ago. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, very portable. So you couldn't download this onto your laptop and run the uh, the inspections locally. So you every time you wanted to run through RPM diff, you had to submit a build, which then would go through automation to then tell you if it was a success or a failure. Um, you can see that the tests performed are very similar to uh, RPM inspects. That's intentional because RPM inspect is replacing it. Um, but RPM inspect was built with goals as a result of learning from RPM diff. So uh, if there's any developers in here uh, that are that are maintaining packages for any distribution, you know that <laughs> if a system tells you they're a failure and you cannot replace replicate that on your desk, it is the worst. <laughs> You're trying to you you want to see the failure locally so you can then iterate through code changes to see if you can make it go away um, and or you know show locally that it doesn't it's not accurate that it's actually a bug on the tool. So with RPM Inspect, we wanted developers to be able to do local testing on their personal machine, not have to send it to a, um, a system for the testing, but also it allows for the portability of that. If you can run it locally, then you could run it on a container in pretty much any cloud, any CI system. And as long as you have all the required dependencies, it'll run just fine. And again, it's easily scriptable. It, it just does a failure or success from the return code. And the result of this <clears throat> is that Tag Runner is helping, well, has helped with the current release that, that should be out in a week or two, depending. Um, when we started the Tag Runner project, I have been working with David Cantrell. He's a member of my team who is the general architect and general or main developer of RPM Inspect. And we were working together on the stability of both RHEL 9 and RPM Inspect. And at some point I started making these ad hoc scripts that would just run it across everything. <laughs> and started finding little problems like, oh, okay, if I do a wild loop with one inspection at a time, it takes like three or four days. Okay, I could probably speed that up with threads and then iterated slowly and slowly to the point where it got to where I was being asked if I could run those, those tests daily because we were, we'd get you know three or four pull requests in, we'd get a new copper build in and we would wanna test that things are fixing, overall numbers are improving. Um, and also if, if not, uh, can we pull the data and see what our top failures are? Can we see if if these are uh, business level failures? Are these code level failures? That kind of thing. So uh, yeah, the, the general speed of replacing RPM diff with RPM inspect lended itself to rapid testing. And there's a lot of edge cases when you're trying to compare builds. So having, <laughs> having 2,500 tests you can run automatically in about four hours is a really good way to smoke test updates. Um, and again, it helps both sides, which is, which is pretty great. And as noted earlier, I think I said it before, but you know, inspection failures fall into two categories. Either it's a bug that we need to fix in RPM inspect, which we love to hear about. And we will of course fix that's all tracked on the issues on uh, GitHub, or it's a valid failure that requires an updated build to fix whatever uh, RPM inspect is found, or you use a local configuration file, RPM inspect.yaml, which says, I'm okay with this. And this is, again, there, there might be a business case for why the kernel, as an example, might have some special use cases that maybe Z shells shouldn't be using. <laughs> I'm just picking random names. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. Um, but there are over, there are wide swaths of decisions made at the business level and at a, at a more granular level, it may not make sense, but we support adding uh, YAML files. And we have done some pull requests for some smaller little uh, changes um, to 
help the developers get to a passing state without them having to chase it down. Um, and then, yeah, so these two pull requests, I forget if those were, I think they were Wednesday. They were this week. Um, those were two uh, bugs that uh, Tag Runner had found uh, when running against uh, a series of builds. And again, you just, you find the failure. Uh, I'm able to document it with all of the data we're catching, provide that to David. And then I think he fixed both of those the same day that I found them just running across the, the, the tag. So <clears throat> the stats <laughs> on the right side, you'll see what the logs directory looks like. So there's all your, your various log files. Um, I, I actually added two more yesterday. So uh, runtime was just the date command previously, but now I switched it to use epoch. So you have starts, finish, and runtime. And it does the math to see how many seconds a test ran. So that way I can easily pull uh, build runtime. So we can see which ones are taking the longest. And if they're not that big, try to figure out why they're taking so long. Um, but the statistics as of yesterday, when running the entire uh, C9S pending tag, um, the absolute runtime was about eight hours, and that's both inspection and comparison. So at the time I ran the tests, there were 2,542 builds uh, in that tag. 86% of them passed on the individual inspection. So that's just, you know, in this case, it would just be Z shell 589. And then in the comparison pass, so everybody that passed successfully, we then found their previous build and then did a comparison. We had a 97% pass rate there. And the best way we can improve these statistics is just feedback from users and developers. And so if, if you see a failure in RPM inspect, whether it's on Zool or somewhere else it's being run and it doesn't appear to be accurate, I mean, feel free to reach out, file an issue in GitHub. Um, we're happy to look into that and try to see how, how we can better improve RPM inspect or how we can help you to create a YAML file or maybe help you to understand the failure. Um, we have done a concerted effort to make the failure messages readable and understandable because sometimes they can be very cryptic. <laughs> so uh, if they're not, or if you think those could be improved, that's also fair game. Feel free to file an issue and say, oh, I finally figured this out and maybe we could word this error message differently. But any feedback is helpful. So um, what are the things that we're working on or I'm working on primarily for, for Tag Runner? So much like RPM Inspect itself, we're tracking issues or uh, requests for enhancements and, and the issues itself. All the issues now are all things I want to do. <laughs> I have an idea, I just file an issue. Um, our team has talked about creating a pipeline to just gen, uh, to monitor general pipeline uh health. So in this case, be like run the pipeline against the, the standard compose and see what the, the before and after numbers are. Are numbers going up? Are they going down? Is it by any huge metrics? Um, we don't have that yet, but I think that could be a helpful thing. But for me, the main concern is making sure we have a runner that can that can run it in a reasonable period of time. <laughs> so we would need a lot of these CI runners tend to have like one processor and maybe a gig of memory or something. We would need at least four or eight processors, by the guess. Um, I want to create a, a single command that runs everything and then gives a report that's easy to digest. So that way, uh, David could just check out the repository and just run it without having me run it or anybody really on the team. Uh, right now, I still kind of stitch together things a little bit. Uh, the current iteration is not a perfect solution. It's just the working one um, that I started on about two months ago. So as Alexandra on my team said, just go fast, get it and get and get feedback. <laughs> um, so yeah, better resiliency for public networks. So I work from home, uh, as, as you can see, and I'm here in Texas and our headquarters are on the East Coast. And I've noticed that even for CentOS 9 stream, which again, one of the benefits of being in the public is that I can run all of these tests using Tag Runner without being on a VPN. Like these are all public APIs. These are all public build systems you can talk to. And sometimes I'll just get unexpected timeouts over uh, over my local network, and it's all wired in, so it's not there shouldn't be any wireless interference. It's the problem, but I need to. I've done it a few places. I need to keep testing it, see where it breaks, give it reasonable <laughs> uh, resiliency in the code, so that I can just run it from here without tunneling into a, a system like in the Red Hat network to get around that. Um, so there is a size-based sorting POC. So one of the things I've found recently when I run these 2,500 builds is that at the very end, 
there'll be a couple of stragglers that take maybe an hour. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember. I think uh, MySQL was yesterday's, um, which I vaguely remember being new. But it's stuff like LibreOffice that's really, really large. Um, and so I have some code that pulls all of the build information from Koji, finds the size, and then sorts from large to small. So we start with the big ones. Um, I, I forget the exact amount, but I want to say it was like 400 gigabytes of space we needed when I did that, which was fine. I was able to do it, but um, that's a, a flag I would like to add for the sake of speed. It does speed things up a little bit. Uh, it does take a while to run doing all those API calls. So I'd like to add a cache so that if, I mean, if you're rerunning these things every day or a couple times a week or even weekly, I mean, a lot of these builds will be the same. So anytime I can cache it and take the load off of Koji speeds things up and makes everybody happy. And of course, if, if, if you try it out, if you find any bugs, if you're interested in it, you know, feel free to file an issue or send a pull request and we'll be happy to look at it and uh, just keep trying to make things uh, better. So <clears throat> uh, before the questions, the, the last thing that I wanted to say was, you know, this project for me uh, is the type of project that I like to to show to younger engineers, um, you know, I, I started out working in data centers, running cables and building computers and um, uh, went into Rackspace and I was there for a number of years before coming to Red Hat three years ago. And um, I've always been kind of a systems guy. I like code. I like automating. I like solving interesting problems with software. Um, but ultimately, I'm trying to use the knowledge of systems and maybe networking and storage and code to solve some kind of problem. And the, the work that David does on RPM Inspect is, is pretty intricate and, and pretty interesting. And it always, there are certainly a lot of days it feels like it's over my head. Um, but this to me is, it's just shell scripts that are trying to help and automate stuff. And so for people that sometimes maybe feel overwhelmed when they look at, at open source and how they can help, but maybe they know Linux, maybe they're pretty savvy with Linux, a project that this to me feels a lot more approachable um, and I don't know, just kind of put some eyes into it as well. I like the fact that with CentOS Stream 9, you can, you can just run this from home. Like if I was 16 and playing with Linux, this would have been pretty cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, yes, yes, Robert, that darn Z shell. Um, so yes, I'm not sure if there's any questions. I don't see any yet. I'll, I'll stop talking for a moment in case anybody has any questions. Otherwise, you know, if we, if we're done, we'll just wrap it up. So there are some questions if you click on the, uh, the Q and A tab. Ah, there we go. Instead of what says chat. Yep. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, so David is asking, would one be able to use Tag Runner against CDS to inspect SIG build packages? Um, as long as we can pull the packages from the tag, like if they're a tag in Koji within that, uh, the, 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 the builds, like it should be able to. Um, right now, everything is, is currently hard coded. One of the issues I have open is to create profiles. Um, and all the profiles would do is um, let you choose uh, the tag that you're going after and then uh, the Koji endpoint. Because obviously there's, you know, there's several Koji instances floating around even within the Fedora, CentOS and Red Hat space. Um, so once I have profiles, uh, if you were to use that, you could just copy one and then I'm going to have one file per profile. So it's not terribly difficult. And then you would just define that. So if you give it the, the tag for the builds, it should work. Um, and if, if uh, it doesn't, or if, if we can help with that, I mean, feel free to reach out. Um, my contact information's here at the end. I'll be happy to make it work for other smaller groups. That'd be awesome. And let's see here. Uh, what, <clears throat> what do we compare to when running comparison tests? Uh, build the same package. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, previous build of the same package in C9S uh, pending. Yep, that's exactly correct. So if it's uh, if we have a successful inspection on C9S pending tag for you know bash or whatever you might have, we are looking for the previous build in the exact same tag. So um, again, we so when we pull it, we do the latest tag when we're doing the initial run, and when we do the comparison, what we do is we we hit Koji with. Uh, the actual uh, package name. So for those unfamiliar, there's package, which would be like bash. And then there's the build, which is, you know, bash 1.0-1.el9, you know, the NBR section. So <clears throat> we asked Koji for the last two builds from the tag for a given package. 
And then we, you know, walk through those two and then make sure that the second one is in fact older <laughs> and not the same. Because sometimes you can have a, a successful inspection where there's only one, uh, one build on the tag. So they might have done one build when 9.0 came out and then by 9.3, they haven't had to update it. And so that we just sort of skip over that. We don't, we don't run those inspections. Um, but yeah, so that there is a, there is a use case where you don't have one, <laughs> but we are looking for the, the previous build of the same package in the same tag. All right. And then, so the RPM, so this is from Robbie. And so the RPM in fact, uh, YAML lives in the spec file repo. How does it get injected into the run? That's actually, so yeah, so the, the RPM inspect YAML file is, um, it, so it runs in the local directory. So if, if where you're running the, the actual test, it can, um, it can read anything that's local or you can define uh, a YAML file as part of the CLI options. Um, I'll let, it, I don't think, I don't know if uh, David's on here or not, but <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that the CI infrastructure is responsible for um, defining where that is. Um, I know that we use that in the build directory, so we put it in the root directory for the, the, the disk git, as we sort of call it. Um, so the, the git repository for the code itself. So you put that in the root directory, and then the CI system respects that as a part of um, as a part of the uh, gating process. So when it, so like Zool or some other system runs it, it can. Um, but if you're testing, say your RPM inspect YAML file then you would just put it in the same directory as, as where you're running RPM inspect. So it'll, or again, there's a command line option to tell it where to go find it, but it's it, for our workflows. Um, and again, I'd probably have to confirm with somebody, but I'm pretty sure if RPM inspect.yaml is in the Git repository for the package, uh, in this case, I believe in GitLab for stream, then it'll be, it'll be read in and then that'll be used for the, the run itself. Nice. Oh, let's see here. So we have another question. Uh, have you considered adding a Koji plugin interface so the RPM spec runs just against a newly built RPM right after uh, the build? So we do have. Um, so earlier in the talk, um, so Zool, if there's a if there is a, um, a pull request or a merge request, I always say pull request. Zool does run RPM inspect against that merge request in GitLab for updates. So there are on-demand um, runs there. And then as a part of what my team does uh, with testing, so for, for testing RHEL, right? So we build it in CentOS Stream 9, and then we do some testing on the Red Hat side. Our RPM inspect is one of those tests. And so we do have builds that are tested, like all builds are tested against RPM inspect. But the, the goal of Tag Runner is more for like wide testing of a new version of RPM inspect. Um, we do iterate through newer versions in the pipeline to make sure that we're improving and you know, any bug fixes we find are getting in there. Um, but this is mostly focused at trying to run everything. So, you know, you may have had a build that went through the system three months ago and we have those results from three months ago when the build came through, but you know, maybe the results have changed from all the iterations we've had over those last three months. And so the, We've had some uh, some reports where we go through all the data that we have, and then we like so one of the things that started this process for us was we were um, looking at the data provided, and we would say, "Oh, this failed, and this failed because of the bug that we fixed." And then we would rerun that test, and we would see that it passed now. And so that, that's sort of the, the uh, creation of our tag runner was, "Well, let's let's rerun those tests now that it's been a couple of months, and we have a newer version that has fixed." A reported bug before, but the you know the pipeline you know at the time they may have tested it, saw that it was a failure that had a bug, noted the bug, and that was the only failure that was in the log, and so they they waved it through saying it's fine, don't worry about that. <clears throat> Let's see. And then Neil said, why don't these uh, run as part of a Koji build task? So the builds can fail to be tagged if it uh, fails RPM inspect, RPM lint, et cetera. So that, I, that's more, that's probably more of like, I'd probably lean into Alexandra or something along those lines as far as um, the, the decisions, as far as like with Koji builds, what they want to do first, like what makes the most sense to sort of gatekeep at the, at the build level as opposed to at the tag level. 
Um, I mean, I know that RP Inspect is being used again with Zool, so it is being used uh, extensively for for baseline testing. But as far as um, having as part of a build step, that, that probably starts to get out of my uh, my wheelhouse. But that's kind of most days, so I could probably figure it out. But it's a discussion we could have at some point for sure. I just I don't have the the right answer for you yet, Neil. Sorry. And I think we're at time. Actually, I think we're. I think we have run out of time. <laughs> More questions than I expected, so that's nice. But yeah, if, if you wanted to follow up or if you didn't have any a good answer, maybe I didn't answer it exactly, you wanted, again, feel free to, to reach out. So jbearredhat.com, um, that's my GitHub. I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, uh, the IRCs as well, so the Fedora CI chats and things like that as jbear. But feel free to reach out. Um, I'll be happy to, to talk further if anybody's interested. But thanks. I appreciate you guys. Great. Thank you, Jim. Uh, we'll have our next talk at um, in 13 minutes at half after the hour, whatever hour it is for you. Um, in the meantime, feel free, everybody, to join us in the, uh, the hallway track under sessions. Um, and we'll see you in the next talks. Okay. Uh, again, thanks, Jim. Thanks.